Hello, my name is Louise McCluskey and I'm going to present this A lecture on uniform members in axial compression and bending to Eurocode 3. This lecture is broken up into four sections, so first of all I'm going to be talking about the interaction method, followed by sections on Annex A and Annex B, and then an example at the end. Uniform members in bending and axial compression demonstrate a complex structural behaviour. And this is due to the fact that first order bending moments are induced due to lateral loading and end moments. Second order bending moments are induced to, due to axial loading, which amplifies existing bending moments about both axes. In Eurocode 3, there are two methods which we could use when dealing with uniform members in bending and axial compression. These are the interaction method in clause 633 or the general method in clause 634. For the purpose of this lecture, I will only be looking at the interaction method. So for the interaction method, we need to refer to clause 633 of EN 1993 part 11, and we will also need to refer to either Annex A or Annex B, and the choice of Annex depends on the specific method that we use. Clause 633 part 1 states that when Checking uniform members in bending and axial compression, a distinction is made between um, members not susceptible to torsional deformation, so structural hollow sections, circular hollow sections, and fully restrained members, and then members susceptible to torsional deform deformation, for example, eye sections. Clause 633 Part 2 states that the resistance of the cross sections at each end of the member should also satisfy the requirements given in Clause 6.2. And clause 6.2 is to do with cross-section resistance of the section. So basically, we need to make sure that the section has sufficient cross-section resistance as well as meeting the checks described in this lecture. Clause 633 Part 2 Sorry, Clause 633 Part 3 states that for members of structural systems, the resistance check may be carried out on the basis of the individual single span members regarded as cut out of the system and that second order effects of the sway system, P delta effects, have to be taken into account, whether by the end moments of the member or by means of appropriate buckling lengths respectively. Clause 633 part 4 gives us two interaction formulae which need to be satisfied. So we have equations 6.61 and 6.62, and we are going to need interaction factors for these formulas. So we're going to need KYY and KYZ for equation 6.61 6 and KYZ and KZZ for equation 6.62. So these are the two formulas and both of these need to be satisfied. So you can see they look quite complicated and you can see that the interaction factors are KYY, KYZ, KZY, KZZ. On the next slide I'll go through what the terms in these equations mean. So we have NED, MYED and MZED, which are the design values of the compression force and the maximum moments about the YY and ZZ axes along the member respectively. We have delta MYRD and delta MZRK, which are moments due to the shift of the centroidal axis according to clause 6293. Chi Y and Chi Z were reduction factors due to flexural buckling from clause 631, and Chi LT is a reduction factor due to lateral torsional buckling from clause 632. For members not affected by lateral torsional buckling, this value can be taken as 1, and I've already mentioned the interaction factors. This is table 6.7 from Neurocode 3, and it gives us the values of the terms needed to work out NRK. NIRK and delta MIED. So at the top you can see that NRK equals FYAI and MIRK equals FYWI. And the values in the table depend on the class of the section. So class 1 and 2 use plastic modulus values WPLY and WPLZ, whereas class 3 uses the elastic modulus values and class 4 the effective modulus values.
So you've seen uh, this equation on the previous slide. So NRK equals FYAA, but the design buckling resistance MBRD equals chi times A times FY over gamma M1, as defined in clause 631, equation 6.47. Therefore, if we rearrange that, NBRD equals chi NRK over gamma M1. So we know that the term circled here in equation 6.61 or equivalent to the design buckling resistance of the member. So now I'm going to talk about the interaction factors from equations 661 and 662 in more detail and describe how you can obtain these values using either Annex A or Annex B. So as I said before, the interaction factors can be obtained using two methods. So the first method involves referring to Annex A, or as the second method involves referring to Annex B. Annex A is slightly more complicated, but using it results in great, usually results in greater efficiency. So the first method, um, we're using Annex A, so we need to refer to Table A1 of EN 1993 Part 11 specifically, and this method is based on second order in plane elastic stability theory. We need to determine equivalent uniform moment factors, CMI0, which depend on the shape of the applied bending moment. Um, from table A2 of EN 1993 part 11. So we're going to refer to these two tables, A1 and A2, to help us work out the values of these interaction factors. So this is table A1, and this gives us the formulas to work out the interaction factors Kij uh, for interaction formula in clause 633. We have the interaction formulas on the left, and then Sorry, we have the interaction factors on the left, and then the formula that we use will depend on the class of the section. Um, you might notice a lot of terms here begin with C, so CMY, CMZ, CMLT, CYY, CYZ, CZY, and CZZ. So there's quite a lot, and some of the other terms you might not be familiar with, but the table continues on over the next few slides, and it details how you can work out these terms. So for example, here's how you work out those CYY, CYZ, CZZ terms. So it's quite a tedious process. And again, the table continues on to the next slide as well. And here are some more equations that you're given. So we get um, equations for the terms CMY0, CMZ0. And those are equivalent uniform moment factors. So we need to get those from table A2. Um, so they've given you all the equations that you need. It just involves a lot of number crunching to work out the final interaction factors. So this is table A2, and here's where we get the formula to work out the value of CMI0, which I mentioned before. So that just depends on the shape of the bending moment diagram. So overall, method 1 is quite long and tedious, but remember, the results will provide more efficiency. I'm now going to talk about the second method, which uses Annex B. So method 2 makes use of Annex B. And for members not susceptible to LTB, we need to use table B1. Or else for members that are susceptible to LTB, we need to use table B2. Again, we have these equivalent uniform moment factors. So CMY, CMZ and CMLT. And we get those from table B3. So this is table B1. Um, interaction factors KIJ for members not susceptible to torsional deformations. And it's similar to table A1 because the interaction factors are on the left. Um, and the different sections for the different class, sorry, the different sections for the different classes of section are on the right. And this table is much shorter than table A1 and it's much more straightforward to use. But again, we must determine the equivalent uniform moment factors from an additional table. And in this case, it's table f table B3. This is table B2, so interaction factors KIJ for members susceptible to torsional deformations, and it's very similar to table B1, and in some cases we are told to refer back to table B1. So you just use this the same as table B1. And this is table B3, and this is where we get the equivalent uniform factors that we need to use in tables, table, in tables B1 and B2. So I'm not going to go through every single equation there, instead I'm going to go through an example. So this is an example and we're dealing with a class 1, 203 times 203 UC 52 in grade S275 steel undergoing an axial force of 400 kN 
and a major axis ba- and major axis bending moments of 50 kilonewton meters at each end, and there's no minor axis moment, meaning MZED is equal to zero. So in a full calculation, you would have to carry carry the buckling resistance checks as well, but for the purpose of this example, we should leave it out, and we would use the summary of results instead. So we have the buckling resistance about both axes. We have lambda bar y equal to 0.66. We have chi LT equal to 0.784. And we get that from the LTB check. And we know gamma M1 is equal to 1 from the national annex. So these values are important and we will be using them later. For this example, we're going to use method 2, which refers to annex B because it is susceptible. Sorry, it's more suitable for manual calculations. So we're using table B1 because our member is not susceptible to torsional deformations. And at the bottom here, we have the note saying that for ice actions under axial compression and uniaxial bending, MYED, MYED, the coefficient KZY may be equal to naught. That's good because it means that we already have one interaction factor without having to do much work. So we know that K, KZY is equal to zero, and that simplifies down equation 661 down, down a bit. Um, we can work out the first term of this equation, so the axial force NED is 400 kilonewtons, as stated in the equation. We said before that um, J times NRK over gamma M1 is equal to NBRD, which is the design buckling resistance. And uh, from the buckling resistance summary, that value is 1,469 kN for the y-axis. So we have 400 over 1,469 as the first term in equation 661. Um, now we're told in the question that there's zero minor axis moment, meaning MZED is equal to zero. We know KZY is equal to zero, so equation 662 can be simplified down. So it's simplified down to NED over the design buckling resistance, so that's 400 over 1356 for the Z axis, which works out as 0.295, which is less than 1, so we can, say, we can safely say that equation 662 is satisfied. All we need to do now is to ensure that equation 661 is also satisfied. So continuing on with equation 661, we need to work out the value of MYRD, so we refer to table 6.7. And um, since we have class 1 sections, so we are going to use the plastic modulus, which is 567 by 10 to the power of 3, and you get that from the blue book. And the yield strength is 275, and we get MYRK then equal to 155.9 kilonewton meters. So we've worked out MYRK as 155.9 kilonewton meters, and JLT was 0.784 from the buckling resistance summary. So those two values multiplied by each other equals 122.2 kilonewton meters. We still need to get um, KYY. So remember, we're using method two, so we need to refer to table B1 of Annex B. So we know our section is class one, and we're looking to work out the value of KYY. So we need to use the formula highlighted in table B1. So this is the formula, and we know lambda bar y is 0.66, and that NED is 400 kilonewtons, and that chi y, chi y NRK over gamma M1 is equal to NBYRD, which is 1,469 kilonewtons. Gamma M1 is 1. So all we need to get is the equivalent uniform factor, CMY, in table B3, before we can work out KYY. So here's table B3, and we're dealing with the major axis bending moments of 50 kilonewton meters at each end, which, cause, which causes constant bending moment along its length. So psi is equal to 1, and we can use the equation shown 0.6 plus 0.4 psi must be greater than or equal to 0.4 to work out CMY. So CMY works out as 1, and we can put that into the equation for KYY along with all of the other values that I mentioned previously. And KYY then works out as 1.125. So now that we know KYY, we can put it into equation 661. So put in KYY into equation 661, and the final answer that we get is 0.731, which is less than 1. 
Therefore, equation 661 is satisfied. And since equation 662 was also satisfied, our section is suitable. And this example concludes this lecture on combined axial compression and bending to Eurocode 3.